Hello, and welcome to Engineer's Box. Now today I've got a uh, much anticipated video for you guys. Now if you follow me on Twitter then you'll know that I've been talking about custom blocks for a little while now. And today, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at. So, the way my blocks work is a little bit different to most of these creations. In that what we've got is the ability to have custom models, as you can see here, custom drops, and also breaking detection. See that? I got one of those, which is pretty cool. So, this is actually really, really great, because it means that it's, it's a viable option for almost any of these custom command mob packs or anything that people are creating, or just in general. Now, uh, another great thing about it is that it only uses one entity. Now, that, that's, well, that's a kind of downside as well, but the fact that it's only one entity makes it so much simpler. So, basically, what we've got going on here is we've got a, a spawn egg here, uh, a spawn rabbit, which is named Blue War in this case, you can see. It's called spawn, uh, the entity tag has rabbit in it, and then the typing of zero, just so you don't get any strange, because sometimes you get some strange little bugs with rabbits and things like that. Um, and then we've got the custom name of it, which is or, and then it's visible. And then no AI, so it doesn't move, and it's silent as well. And it's persistent, so that it doesn't despawn if a sudden chunk reload occurs or something like that, so that your block is always, always there. So if we have a look at this spawn egg right here, you can see that it's uh, this little thing right here. And this is actually just a, a retextured item based off that LOC name. Now if we go back here, you can see that LOC name, Blue Ore. Basically, this is just a replaced texture based off that name, pretty much. And the, that uses just some JSON stuff, and I'll show you that in a minute. So if we take a look at the JSON here, it's actually pretty simple. Now what we've got is uh, a couple of files, and if we go into the custom block section, you see I've got the blue ore properties file and a blue ore JSON file, so that's the model that you can see here. And I've also got the um, box properties and the box JSON. That's for the item, um, but I'll go over what the actual overlay is and where that is, where that's stored. So if we have a look at the items here, you can see that um, both the, uh, the box and the blue ore are just replacing a spawn egg with the name blue ore and then giving it the model or box and giving it that model so pretty simple pretty easy and this just looks for these model files in the side of this folder now for the overlays over these boxes it's it's pretty simple as well what we've got is a golden shovel here and you can see these damage values that go up from 1 all the way to 11 here so these last two are the tester that one is that blue ore and box is that one right there so as you can see, what we've got is just a damage value. This one indicates uh, a damage value of 10. So basically how you do that is the maximum da damage you can have for a golden shovel is 32. So you divide 10 by 32 and it gives you that number. And same with the next one along, 11 by 32 and it gives you that number. And basically what you're doing is these overrides is just looking for a golden shovel with that damage value and then just replacing it with that model right there. Now, who the hell uses golden shovels anyway? They're pointless. Get yourself a diamond shovel. If you use golden shovels, then who are you? Who, who are you? Anyway, so as you can see, it's really simple. Just replacing this stuff. And the box JSON is really, really simple. It's just, um, now I'm sorry about this. I haven't um, unminified it yet. So pretty much all it is is just a model file with a change display for the head of a armor stand. Pretty much it. And that goes the same with the like the blue ore sort of one that I had before, the tester. If I bring that up, so if we go to item, go down to tester, bring that up, you can see that's got the same sort of thing there. So as you can see, it's really simple, really easy to use. Let's jump back into the game. So the what we've got here is the ability to place and it's got no it's, it's solid, so you can place place it on top of it, place it on the side. I mean, you could build up a wall and place it on a wall. It's it, it's extremely versatile, which is great, and it's got the breaking detection too. So, if we have a look at uh, the placing part of this code right here, what we've got is just testing for a rabbit with the name or, and then executing at that rabbit, and armor stand with the tags 
small. A custom name of block. It's got a really. It's got marker one. Now remember, marker is actually what makes the hitbox really tiny, so it doesn't have any blackening effects and things like that. And it's it's an interesting thing. Some blocks still cause blackening effects, but I'll go into that in a minute. And the pose is just there to make sure that there is no shifting in the way that it spawns based off with which way the rabbit is. Um, the hand items is basically we've got a spawn egg in there with the custom name of Blue Ore and an entity tag there. That's just there so that if so you get it back once you once it dies. And then the drop chances of it, invisible, no gravity, and the armor items. Now we've got a retextured golden shovel here with the count one and damage ten. So if I give myself a uh, golden shovel with the value of ten, we can see that we get this uh, this really big block. Now that's basically what's going over the top of it is just this retexture. And the great thing about this means that you can have almost infinite textures whatsoever, and you can also have models as well. So you don't actually have to use a texture; you can just use a model instead, and it's happy to use that, which is the great thing about this. And then from there, basically, so it's just giving it that shovel as well. And then we go on to the second one, where it's executing at that rabbit as well. And this is the interesting part. So you can set block anything. So at the moment, it's a cauldron, so this block could be used to store ore. I could set it to a chest and have it so that it acts as a chest. You can set it to a shulker box. Any transparent block, basically. And the interesting thing is, you can even make it stairs. You can make stairs and slabs out of these custom blocks, and it works. They stack and everything. You can even make custom textures so when two two of these uh, slabs join together, or if two stairs join together. you can. It's super versatile, and it works in all situations. And then from there, basically we're just TPing the rabbit down to negative 500, so it despawns instantly, and we don't get any of those weird dying effects. Um, so that's the placing here. And then the breaking is actually really simple. The breaking itself is one command. The giving it, giving the block back is two. So the way it breaks is you're executing at an armor stand named block. Now remember that was the name of the armor stand. And we're just executing detect and then looking for at that position an air block so that there's nothing there. And then the command that it executes is kill at S, which is obviously at S down here you can see is the executing entity, which in this case is that armor stand. So it's a single command for this destroy which is perfect, which makes this really small, and you can implement this into functions as well, because it has no real relative execution order, so that you can just make a billion of these blocks, and then run blo just run perfectly. Basically what we've got after that is just giving another, giving the spawn egg, so basically just giving this to the player, um, and it's got all of the tags and so forth that the original spawn egg had. And then we're just getting rid of the cauldron. So this last block isn't actually necessary if you want the block drop to be the block um, but if you want it to be uh, just the spawn egg then you can do that there now if you wanted it to be whatever block was set inside then you can do that still that way you don't you don't use this command block if you're doing that but in this case it just clears the block from the player's inventory when they pick it up really simple and easy so as you can see this is incredibly simple and just has a lot of versatility in terms of what you can do with it now the great thing about this is I actually use this process with my IC2 custom command back. If you haven't checked that out already, I will I do weekly updates on that, usually. Weekly to fortnightly. Um, and this is perfect for that because I can create machines and so forth. All those sort of things. Now, an example of using different blocks is using a trap chest or a chest. So if I walk up to this crate, I can right click it and it brings up an inventory. Now I can store items in here as if it was a normal chest, and you can hear it even has a closed sound, which is pretty cool. Now, actually, if we have a look at this, we go into spectator mode. This is... It doesn't seem like there's anything inside here, does there? Nothing at all. There's actually a trap chest in there, but you can't see it. It's pretty interesting, the way that works. But anyway, uh, the custom drops work too, so that's all good. Um, so... Down to actually what you need to do to create one of these. Basically, these two set of command blocks or commands inside of a function file are mandatory. You need them for this to work. They're simple and easy to do, basically. You can legitimately just copy these and substitute in whatever items or whatever overlay you want onto it. So it's super easy to deal with. Now, I'll also include a resource back in the description. Um, it probably won't be at upload it probably won't be there at the time of this uploaded video 
but it will be there pretty soon. Also, it'll be on on my website if you haven't checked that out already. And that will include the file so that you can, with this current texture in it, with the, the blue ore here, and all of this stuff installed. And I'll also include a uh, little piece of script there with all of the commands in it so that you can just drag and drop them into command blocks or use them in functions, whatever you want to do, and then just create a block. Now, for each block, it requires these seven command blocks for each each block. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of a drawback, but it's not that much considering the functionality. And if you wanted to do a detect of the block, then all you have to do is use this command the executing at that block if you're detecting the breaking and then from there you execute whatever command you want to do whether it be adding to scoreboard whether it be setting a block somewhere whatever you want to do so it's simple it's easy it's one command which means that whatever you're doing it's super simple it makes it easy for you guys to use i'm trying to keep it as simple and most functionally po vast as possible so it works and then you can execute whatever command you want after it. So that's all good and it works perfectly. So I might just give it one little last go. You can place it, destroy it, get it back. Oh, the satisfaction is real. So I, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. It's a pretty interesting one. It's actually probably one of my most favored subjects of all time. Um, and it's, it's great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And as always, I will catch you guys in the nearest of futures.